Good evening students, welcome to this video segment. In this video segment, we shall discuss the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, this theorem was this, uh, discovered or found by a man named Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Uh, he is uh, actually a Greek, a Greek uh, mathematician. Now, what did this guy say? What, did, what is he talking about? Uh, before we continue, we have to look at what we call a right angle triangle, or what you just call a right triangle. Right angle triangle, some people call it right angled triangle or you just say a right triangle okay this theorem deals with only right triangles so what is it saying if we don't have a right triangle this theorem will not apply it will not apply this theorem will only apply to right triangles okay what is a right triangle of course, if you can recall, a right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle, that has a right angle, okay? And what is a right angle? An angle of 90 degrees. That is a right angle. So, if any triangle has one right angle. That means that triangle is a right triangle or a right angle triangle. You know. Okay. Uh, now, how do we know a right triangle? How do we know a right triangle because of a small square? There's a small square inside the triangle. Okay. If you don't see that square. And if they do not tell you from the question that that triangle is a right triangle, please and please do not, I repeat, do not assume that it is a right triangle. I repeat, if you do not see this small square, you know, that's a small square, okay? If you do not see, if you, if you want to solve a question and you, they give you a triangle and you do not see the small square and they did not tell you from the question that the triangle is a right triangle. Do not assume that it's a right triangle. Even if it looks perfect, like even if you have a straight vertical and a straight horizontal. If you are not told that, do not say it's a right triangle. No, do not do that. Now, if they draw a triangle, no matter how it looks, it might look beautiful, it might look ugly, it might look uh, straight, it might not look all that straight. And if they put this small square inside it, or if they tell you that it is a right triangle, please use it as a right triangle. Don't come, especially when it says it's not drawn to scale. Don't come and use your judgment to see whether you, is this a right triangle? You take a protractor to measure it, to measure the angles to know. No. So, it, what I'm trying to teach you is, for a right triangle, for the questions that they would ask you, they would either put a small square, inside the triangle which tells you automatically that is a that it is a right triangle or they will tell you from the question that it is a right triangle if i come now and i remove this small square if i remove it right this is not a right triangle it is not even if it looks to you that is straight we don't do it that way okay i've got to put this this makes it a right triangle Okay, that is the first thing you need to learn. 
The next thing also is, a right triangle has three sides, just like an ordinary triangle has. A triangle, triangle means three. Tri, of course, means what? Three. Three angles. Okay, so triangle means three angles. That's what it means. You have three angles. Tri, an angle. Okay. And it also three sides. Of course, if it has three angles, then it has three sides. Okay. Now, in a right triangle, we now we identify these sides. In a right triangle only, not it's not gonna work for an acute triangle or obtuse triangle. I'm talking of right triangle. We identify the sides as either hypotenuse, leg, or leg. So, we have to first of all start with that. We have what we call the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay? Short form is what? Hy. H-Y-P. Then we have, the other side is called the leg. Short form we say is leg. And under side is called the leg. So we have one hypotenuse and two legs. So when we have a right triangle, we have three sides. One side is the hypotenuse, and the other two sides are called the legs. Know that. Okay, so I'm going to abbreviate this as hypotenuse, leg, and leg. Alright. So let us now identify what side is hypotenuse and what other two sides are the legs. So now, if I come here and I'm going to draw all the forms that you can see, forms of right triangles that you can see, and you just tell me which one is hypotenuse, which one is the leg, and which one is the leg. Let me start with this. If I draw this, of course, this is a right triangle, right? What makes it a right triangle? The right angle here, this small square. That is what we call a right triangle. That is what we call a right angle. It is 90 degrees. That is the 90 degrees here. That's more square you see. Okay. When you have this, of course you have three sides. This side, this side, and this side. Right? So, uh, the side that is facing this right angle, the side facing the right angle, the side facing a right angle and I'll put in parentheses I'll put in parentheses usually the longest side longest side but I do not want you to see it as the longest side first I want you to see it as the side facing the right angle so this side facing the right angle is the hypotenuse and then the other two sides are the legs that is it so you first of all identify the side facing the right angle and then the other two sides are the legs we call them legs another one i'm going to draw a lot so you see what if i have it this way right if I have it this way, where this is the right angle? Then this would be the hypotenuse, which would because it's the side facing the right angle. And the other two sides are the what? The legs. See? What if I have it this way? Right? The side facing the right angle is the hypotenuse and the other two sides are the legs. Right? Because this is still a right triangle. Because why? Because it has a right angle. What if I have it this way? Right? The side face, now you can have any of these forms in a question. It must not look 
like this, it must not, they can draw it any way. The underlining factor is, does it have a right angle? Yes, and if it does, it is a right triangle. If you have it like this, this is the hypotenuse, this is the leg, and this is the leg. Right? What if you have it this way? You have it this way. Now, do not worry about how it looks to you. Okay? You might have it this way. And then you might say, no, this is not a right angle. You are not being tested on. If you, if, if you are asked to verify whether it's a right angle, then you use a protractor to do that. We, we don't do this by just looking, no. If you see the box, it means it's a right angle. Despite how it looks to you, okay? Now, you can have it this way, or if they, if they want to draw it like this, that's fine also. If they don't want to draw it like this, because maybe that is what maybe some of you want to do it so that it looks like this. Okay, but I am teaching you now. Don't care about how it looks. Do you see this right angle? If you see it, it is a right triangle. Period. Even if it looks like this. Look, even if it looks like this. Is this a right angle? Is this a right triangle? Yes, it is. Why? Because it has. Is this a right triangle? Yes, it is. Because why? It has a right triangle. It, because it has a right angle. It is a right triangle because it has a right angle. So we don't want to know how it looks like. We don't. The main thing is, do you does it have a right angle? Okay. So that's the main thing. Now. If you have this, this will be the word hypotenuse because it's the side facing the right angle and these are the legs. Okay? What if you have it like this? You can have it like this also. Right? Then this will be the hypotenuse and this will be the leg. Okay, so what if you have it like this? No matter how you have it, what if you have it like this? You can still have it this way. It is not your worry to come and say, hey, no, he didn't draw it well. You should have drawn it like this. It is not your worry. We are not doing measurements here. Maybe you want me to draw it like this so it looks like that. It should not be your concern. What should be your concern? is the right angle so this will be the hypotenuse this will be the leg and this will be the leg right what if you have it like this you can have it like this it's a right triangle this is the hypotenuse this is the leg and this is the leg Right? Good. So you can have it any way. So just know that. Now, let's say, let's go back to what this guy said, Pythagoras. Simple demonstration. Just simple demonstration. If you know, like let's say I'm standing here right now and I keep something, you know, I keep Maybe I, I keep something behind my, uh, my feet to demonstrate this is my original place. Okay. And I want to take, like, you know, like let's say the, the easiest example, the easiest way to demonstrate this. Right? This guy is here. Let's say this guy is here. Right? And uh, let's say that this is, let's say that this is Montgomery. Let's call this Montgomery. Let's call this Birmingham. Assuming, assuming, Birmingham. And let's call this Huntsville. Oh, Mobile. <laughs> the three cities in uh, the three main cities in Alabama. Let's say that this is a right triangle. Let's call this Mobile. This is just a, just to explain. And this guy wants to go from Montgomery to Birmingham, right? So 
He can choose to go two ways. He can either go, okay, he, he can go from Montgomery to Mobile and then from Mobile to Birmingham. Right? Or he can just choose to say, oh no, I want a shortcut. Let me just drive from Montgomery straight to Birmingham. Now, why would you call it a shortcut like this? Okay, demonstration. Let's say you take three steps. Let's say you take three steps here, yeah? and then maybe you take four steps here. Yeah? Now, let's say I come here, and I take three, you know, I put maybe a ruler, and I take three steps. One, two, three. Right? And I put another mark here. And then from here, I take four steps, right? And of course, you know, you know what I mean. There's no space. But if I take four steps here, right? You know, I put each step I take and I stop. I put something to hold onto it. Now, you, you, you can just play this trick to your students. You can tell them, okay, once you take four steps here, you tell them, hey, how many steps will it take from here to where you started? You tell them to guess, right? And of course, when they guess, they might guess, they might guess six, they might guess seven, they might guess eight, they might just guess any numbers, right? But of course, they will guess, if they guess right, it will be more than four steps, and it will be more than three steps, if they guess right, right? And you tell them, okay, hey, you know, I know already how many steps I'm going to take already. I'm going to just take five steps in order to get back to where I was. Five steps, you know, three, four, five. So you see that this is five steps. My students, you know, the students I went, you know, when I taught middle school, I told a student to come and he did it. And I told him, hey, I know how many steps you will take to get from this, from this uh, point to this point, you know, from there to there. I told him, you know, I t first of all, I told the students to guess first because I want to get their interest and they guessed. Then I told him, I know, it's five steps. He did that, it was five steps. And he said, Mr. C, how did you know it? <laughs> so, that points us to what this guy said, Pythagoras. Pythagoras said that when you have a right triangle, you know, now I told him this will work only if you take a straight vertical and a straight horizontal. Take a straight, you know, take straight, like don't come, you know, this should be straight. This should be exactly 90 degrees. Straight vertical, straight horizontal, then it will work. Okay, approximately he took five steps and it worked. You know, I told him, mark, put, mark, go straight. So, why did it, why was it five steps? Because of what this guy found out. You know, and you can discover something on your own as well. You can discover. So, he said that the, when you have a right triangle, in a right triangle, because it must be a right triangle, that the hypotenuse squared will be equal to the leg squared plus leg squared. And when I write this, I tell my students, let's give him the credit. Parenthesis, put Pythagoras. Okay, I always write this. And I tell them, put, put it. So, write it so everybody will know, okay, he discovered it. That's fine, give him credit for it. Right? So that is what he said. That the hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. Do I teach them C squared equal to A squared plus B squared? And I would say no. I mean, I just pointed out to them because in the reference page or formula, they have that. But I tell them, hey, if you want to use this, just know that the C is the hypotenuse, the A is the leg, and the B is the leg. But guess what? On the test, they might change, they might put they might put C equal to this, then they might put B equal to this, and then tell you to find A. Okay, what if, if they put if they put C equal to 3, and maybe they put B equal to this, and then they tell you to find A. You see that you can't use this formula, you cannot. 
Because in this case, it will now be a squared equal to c squared plus b squared. So that is why if somebody wants to confuse you, he will just change these variables. A, B, and C are just variables. Some people can say D, D squared equal to E squared plus F squared. I mean, so that is why I don't use this. No. I use this, which is the main thing. Identify the hypotenuse. Identify the hypotenuse. Identify the two legs. You're good. This is the hypotenuse. Leg, leg. So when he took three steps, I know that the leg here is three steps, the leg here is four steps. Already, how do I know that the hypotenuse will be five? I already know. Because I'll say height squared will now be three squared plus four squared. Right? Which is now nine plus sixteen, which is twenty-five. And then the hypotenuse, in fact, that is what I will do at number one. So I'm going to do this again. And then the hypotenuse will now be the positive square root of 25, which is five steps. Five steps. So that is the way we do it, you know. But this is the thing. So in a right triangle, it must be a right triangle. Must. And they must tell you that it's a right triangle. Or they must put the right angle in it. When you know, when you when you've confirmed that it's a right triangle, then you apply the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve these three questions, and I probably may solve more, uh, but for now let's finish these three questions so we can get on with this video. So now, there was something I want to, okay, I'm going to talk about that in question one. I'm going to talk about that. So question one now, let's say that this is, right, we have three meters here, four meters, and you want to find x, right? So you see that this is a right triangle. So you now, first of all, write, the first thing you write is the Pythagoras theorem, Pythagorean theorem. Height squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. Pythagoras. Right? I know that x is my height. I know that 4 is my leg. And I know that 3 also is my leg. So, this is now x squared because x is height. One leg is 3 squared plus 4 squared. Right? So, x squared will be equal to 9 plus 16. And x will now be, x squared will be 25. So x will be the positive square root of 25. So x will be 5 meters. Make sure, make sure that you put meters. Make sure that you put the unit. You see, when I use three steps, four steps and five steps, you know, you make sure you put the unit. Like when I did this, when I did the example I just did, right? The guy here, Montgomery, Mobile, and Birmingham, right? Birmingham City. Okay, and I did three steps here, yeah? and I did four steps here. Yeah? I didn't just put five here. Yeah? You do not. If it does not have unit, then that's fine. But if it has unit, you must put the unit. Now, why must you put the unit? Good. If I tell you now, hey, please give me five. If I say give me five, you ask me, five what? That's the first thing you ask me, five what? Because it could be five shoes, it could be five dollars, it could be five markers, it could be five shirts, it could be five pencils, right? It could be five houses. So you need to put the unit. It could be five miles, it could be five meters. So you need to put the unit to specify. If you don't put the unit, your teacher or instructor might deduct points from your work. So that's why you need to put the unit. Now, if it doesn't have any unit, you leave it as is. You leave it like that. Okay, so now that is, we've finished question one. 
I want to recall, I want to bring you back to something. So if you were here, if you were this guy here, right? This guy here, and you're in Montgomery and you really want to go to Birmingham. You say you can go from Montgomery to Mobile, which will take you three steps, and then Mobile to Birmingham, which takes you four steps. All together, how many steps? Seven steps. Or you can just go five steps, Montgomery to Birmingham. So you see that you can save time by going straight Montgomery to Birmingham, that from going Montgomery to Mobile and Mobile to Birmingham. What did, what, why are we studying Pythagorean theorem? Look at your staircase. Look at the way your staircase is. Do you know that this is your staircase? Already looks like a right triangle. You know? So when you're just going, you see, so there are a lot of applications of this. Okay, so many applications of this. And in buildings, anything that involves a right triangle, you almost see the application of Pythagorean theory. Okay, okay now let's do, let's finish up please. And I want to, I think, I want to keep this video as short as possible. Okay. So we've got number one. Oh no, this is number three. Jones. Okay. All right, number two. We have a right triangle. This is 15 centimeter. 17 centimeter. This is not drawn to scale, okay? And then why? What I find why? Right? So, but we still say Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. Reason Pythagoras. So, in this case, what's the, what's the hypotenuse? Of course, this is the hypotenuse, this is the leg, and this is one leg. This is another leg, right? So, we have that 17 squared is equal to. We can say y squared plus 15 squared. Right? So, equation, please. View my video on equation. We've, we've done equation. Of course, 17 squared will give us, uh, I think that's 289. Uh, 9, 4, 11, 17, 1, 7, 1. Yeah, 289, right? So, 289 is equal to y squared plus 225, right? So y squared plus 225 is equal to 289. Your teachers will do it one way, but let me first of all do it my own way. y squared will be 289 minus 225. So y squared will be uh, 9 minus 5 is 4. 8 minus 2 is 6, 64, right? So y will be... The positive square root of 64, y will be 8. 8 what? Centimeter. Now, you might ask me, why do I put, why do I use positive square root of 64? Because square root can either be positive or negative. View my video on roots and square on roots so you understand what I'm talking about. We only concern with the positive square root. Now, your teachers will do it, some of your teachers will do it this way. They'll just come here, minus 225 here, minus 225 here, right? And then y squared will be uh, 64. It's the same thing, okay? If you want to do it this way, that's fine. Okay, one more and we are done for this video. Now, number three is a word problem. Let's listen well. Jay used the diagram from Jones to John to James. You see, it's like uh, Montgomery to Mobile to Birmingham. So he used the diagram from Jones to John to James. How much shorter is the distance directly from Jones to James? How much shorter? You see, you save time. Remember, for the 
Montgomery to Mobile to Birmingham. If you used Montgomery to Mobile, three, Mobile to Birmingham, four, seven miles, seven steps, right? But if you use Montgomery straight to Birmingham, three, five steps. So how much did you save distance? Seven minus five, which is two steps. You saved two steps. So how much shorter is the distance directly from Jones to James than the distance J found? The distance J found was Jones to John, John then John to James, which is a longer distance. You want to save time. You're working under time. You have to be here by 8 p.m. or so so time. You have to find the shortest distance, right? So when we draw it, okay, this is Jones. Of course, this is a right triangle because of the right angle. This is John and this is James. This is 8 miles, and this is 6 miles. So, first of all, if you want to find how much shorter, let's first of all find the distance from Jones to James directly. Okay? So, let's call this, we might call it P or J, anything you want to call it. Doesn't matter. So, we write height squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. Who said that? Pythagoras. Right? So in this case, our height is the P, our leg 8, another leg 6. So we have that P squared is equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared. Right? So P squared is equal to 64 plus 36. Right? P squared is equal to 100. So P P will be the positive square root of 100. So P will be 10 miles. Make sure you put miles. So P is 10 miles. So how much shorter? How much shorter is the distance directly from Jones to James? Right? So distance, distance from Jones to James is what? 10 miles. Right? But the distance, distance from Jones to James, 10 miles. Distance from Jones to John to James is equal to 6 plus 8, which is 14 miles. Which is 14 miles. Okay? By how much shorter? How much shorter? Okay? So, difference is the shorter. Difference will be 14 miles minus 10 miles, which is 4 miles. So he's going to say 4 marks, which is a reasonable distance. Okay? Thank you students for listening. And if you have any question, feel free to email me. Uh, feel free to email me, okay? Thank you so much for listening. And you have a good evening.